Romeo, come forth. Come forth, thou fearful man. Father, what news? What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banished. Here from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence banish it is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. Then banish it is death. Mistermed, calling death banish it, thou cuts my head off with a golden axe, and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. O oh, deadly sin, O oh, rude unthankfulness. Thy fault our law calls death, but the kind prince taking of thy parts hath rushed aside the law, and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing may look on her, but Romeo may not. Then, fond madman, hear me speak. Oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment. I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Get banished? Hang up philosophy unless philosophy can make a Juliet. Displant a town, reverse a prince's doom. It helps not, it prevails not. Talk no more. Then I see that madmen have no ears. How should they when wise men have no eyes? Let me despair with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that ye does not feel. Wert thou as young as Juliet, my love, an hour but Mary, Tybalt murdered, doting like me, and like me banished, then mightest thou speak. Hold thy desperate hand. Thou hast amazed me. By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better temperate. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself? And slay thy lady that in thy life lies by doing damnitate upon thyself? What? Rouse thee, man, thy Juliet is alive. For whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead? There art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee, but thou sluiced, Tybalt. There art thou happy. The law that threatened death became thy friend, and it turned it to exile. There art thou happy. Go get thee to thy love as was decreed. Ascend her chamber, hence and comfort her. But look thou stays not till the watch be set, for then canst thou not pass to Mantua where thou shalt live, till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and welcome thee back with twenty thousand hundred times more joy than thou went forth in lamentation. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence. Give me thy hand. Tis late. Farewell. Good day. It were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. What is your pleasure, madam? You know, Helen, I'm a mother to you. Mine honorable mistress. Nay, a mother. Why not a mother? When I said mother, me thought you saw a serpent. What's in mother that you start at? I say I am your mother. I <laughs> you ne'er oppressed me with a mother's groan. Yet I express to you a mother's care. God's mercy, maiden, does it curd thy blood to say I am your mother? What's the matter that this distempered messenger of wet the many-colored iris rounds thine eye? Why, that you are my daughter? That I am not. I say I am your mother. Pardon, madam, but the Count Resilian cannot be my brother. I am from humble, he from honored name. 
No note upon my parents, his all noble. My master, my dear lord, he is, and I his servant live, and will his vassal die, he must not be my brother. Nor I your mother. You are my mother, madam. Would you were so that the lord your son were not my brother? I care no more for than I do for heaven, so I were not his sister. But I, your daughter, he must be my brother. Yes, Helen. You might be my daughter-in-law. God shield, you mean it not. Daughter and mother so strive upon your pulse. Oh, what, pale again? My fear hath catched your fondness. Now I see the mystery of your loneliness and find your salt tears head. Now to all sense tis gross. You love my son. Oh, invention is ashamed against the proclamation of thy passion to say thou dost not. Therefore tell me true, but tell me then tis so. For look, thy cheeks confess it the one to the other and thine eyes see it so grossly shown in thy behaviors that in their kind they speak it. Only sin and hellish obstinacy tie thy tongue that truth should be suspected. Speak, is it so? I charge thee, as heaven shall work in me for thine avail, to tell me truly. Your pardon, madam. Do you love my son? Good pardon, noble mistress. Love you, my son? Do not you love him, madam? Go not about. Then I confess. Here on my knee, before high heaven and you, and before you and next unto high heaven, I love your son. My friends were poor but honest. So's my love. Be not offended, for it hurts not him that he is loved of me. Nor would I follow him by any token of presumptuous suit. Nor would I have him till I do deserve him yet never know what that dessert should be. Thus, Indian-like, religious in mine error, I adore the sun that looks upon his worshiper but knows of him no more. My dearest madam, let not your hate encounter with my love for loving where you do, but if yourself, whose aged honor cites a virtuous youth, did ever in so true a flame of liking, wish chastely and love dearly that her Diane was both herself and love. I would then give pity to her whose state is such that cannot choose, but lend and give where she is sure to lose, that seeks to find that her search implies, but riddle-like, live sweetly where she dies. <laughs>